Morning. Mountains, hills, trees, reflections, skies, atmosphere, mood, all to be considered. But I try to be a little more spontaneous with the way I do things these days. I don't really plan. I, I like to set myself free to rampage across a sheet of 15 11 inches by 15 by 11. Fabriano 130 pounds cold pressed paper uh, with my semi moist tray of paints. Uh, as you know, I, I, I do make things up as I go along. Sometimes I work from reference material, my own stuff, and do version, different versions of it. Uh, wherever you can get reference material, and when you paint a lot, as I do, you're always uh, looking for new ideas. But in, having said that, uh, it, it's just as easy now for me to sit here and look at a blank piece of paper and just start painting on it and see what happens. But it has taken a long time to be able to to do. Also, somebody mentioned on Facebook that oh, they like my style. My style, like your style, develops over a number of years. You start off, and I'm talking here not about going to arts colleges, art school, but I never had an art lesson in my life. Like many of most of you, I've learnt the hard way, and a self-taught artist has a bad teacher. Um, so we we don't spend hours, days, weeks in drawing practice. We've mostly started late in life, and we fitted our artwork in around a mortgage and children and stuff. But uh, to be able to improvise, well, you 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 start off by copying those that have gone before. I did. I copied a lot of Roland Hilda stuff, Edward Seago, Edward Wesson. Uh, Ron Ranson came along about 25 years ago. Sadly, Ron died last week. Uh, and um, you you learn your own style by by just painting. You you copy a style to start with. Now I love Roland Hilda's trees, and I still do them. Oh, I do my versions of them. But eventually, you learn your own painting language. And your painting language would be as different from from mine as mine is from, say, Alan Owens. We might paint similar subjects, but we do it entirely different ways, and that comes with experience. The more you do, the the I wouldn't say easier. It's never easier because you just set the bar higher for yourselves. But I still am a great believer that keep it simple, stupid, kiss. Do simple things well rather than complicated things badly. I know if you don't try difficult things you don't improve but then it can be disheartening doing failed masterpiece after failed masterpiece because we've tried to walk before we can run. And the first thing in, in, in uh, watercolours painting is, is laying a wash. A, grad, a gradated or graduated wash, going from a dark to a lighter colour with the paper slanted on a board. Uh, I do it, of course, but I do it randomly. So I wet the paper first, it's wet and wet, makes it much easier to lubricate the paper and put a wash of colour, warm colour, over. Keep it all wet. But not sopping wet. Now we'll put in some nice cloud. Well, it's a very cloudy day today. It's, we're, we're expecting uh, Barbara, Hurricane Barbara, which is rampaging around Scotland at the moment, I believe, with gusts of up to 90 mile an hour, promised. So let's just put this across the top here. We'll put a bit, I, th I can see water coming on. Uh, uh, now, when I said about improvising so on, I improvise within a number of sort of favourite type of views. 
let's just get that in there. So that's a sort of a complicated sky. Now you don't need to stretch this 130 pound Fabriano. A good alternative to this would be 140 pound blocking food, but it'd be much more expensive. This we use because it's 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 cheap. And it's very good for wet in wet. Oops, and it's very tough. You can give it a good old stretch with your fingers, and it won't split. But it will stay nice and flat like that. Now just take off the excess moisture from the bottom, otherwise it'll it'll start going back up again. Uh, right, I'm going to dry that off, so take your headphones off. That's not bone dry. It's, it's, it'll still be damp inside the paper. Right, okay, now we'll uh, put a bit of a background in. So. I do, I do like mountains and hills so let's just put those in put a bit of, bit of lizard in create some distance in these Dendara hills and we can warm it up as we come across I've got some a lot of lovely burnt sienna but it's fresh out of the tube from from yesterday so the sienna as well. Just let the, well I call it following the brush, I'm just letting the brush go and I'm just doing bits and pieces with it as I go along. Oh and it's all, all those people that, or the odd person that puts an unlike on my pictures, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to you. Wish you'd tell me why you don't like it. Or them. Oh, no counting is there for taste. So let's put a bit of an island in as well. I don't use burnt umber a lot, I mainly leave it for beaches, a bit of sienna, it's a, it's a, it's a great colour. I use it in acrylic quite a bit, it mixes with ultramarine very well for lovely lovely skies, ultramarine and, and burnt umber, they, you could get stormy, wonderful effect. Right. A bit of this is just a body of water with with some grassy beds, grassy beaches. Seems to be going up here now, never mind. Okay, put some darker bits in there. Payne's Grey and Burnt Sienna are a match made in heaven as well. But I'm just dipping it, that, that, that Burnt Sienna, I, I, I put it out of the, from the tube last night and it's still lovely and moist. And I want to just put lots of bits of reedy stuff in there. Bit, bit of uh, yellow, well, Burns, uh, raw sienna. 
the paper's now dry-ish and it's taking a lot of lovely dry brush. Look. I just want to just, it's got a little bit wrong here, so turn your mistakes into opportunities. I'll just drag that down there. Enjoy the fun of painting. Don't make make it into a chore. There will be times when you don't, won't feel like painting, and but once you start, you sort of get into it. Right. This is my third start this morning because using that Bockingford that was went all blotchy. Had a real problem with that. It's a shame, really. It's such a good paper. Okay, well that's that. I'm going to leave that open. All that, uh, uh, sort of. Let's try it a bit. I can put in some some reeds, perhaps with a different sort of brush. Now we'll put in some some nice colours on here. Look, I'm really mixing the... Sam Ron Branson used to use his paints. He'd just squeeze them out of the tube and work wet. That way you can always get some lovely juicy paint when you need it. The only problem is, of course, you, you throw it away at the end of the painting session and, and it all goes for nothing. But my method, or adapted Ron's method, is... A compromise. Let's have a bit of green in there, why not? I love it, aren't I? You'll have a job to get these darks if your paint is hard. There we go. Good bit, of, bit of paint over that. Okay. I quite like that. Just use a bit of Payne's Grey. Alright, okay, so we've got quite a bit, oh, it looks like there's quite a bit going on there. So, I'll go to the rigger now. And the way I use the rigger, <coughs> apart from the obvious using the tip, which we will do, by holding it at the tip and just sort of... And I just use the the edge of it, but don't use it soaking wet. You want thick paint on it, and then you can just flick up the side of the brush. Right. When you put above, put down, just straight down, and it all says wet. Hmm. 
just fiddly flicks. <coughs> it all adds character and detail. But that's how you do reflections. You, you put something going up and you put something coming down. More or less in the same position. Now this is where we want some texture. Now somewhere on here I've got oh here. Yeah. I've got a little a little uh, rough old brush here. It's a, it's a small hake. But I'm gonna use it for doing some grass. I don't know if it's going to work, but... Yeah, I'll right. oh, just soak it up a little bit. Right. Yeah, lovely. Tools. I'm going to put some little boats of stuff in. I've got to do some reflections on that. But I don't want to put any great big vertical trees in there. I, I like the space of this. So I'm going to um, to leave it. Now, uh, I'll, where's my little brush? Ah, here. <coughs> Maybe we can, that, that's still wet, so we could probably just... Just showing some little... Trunks showing through, bleached. Bleached wood. Just thicken up that a little bit. I'll do, I'll do. Right, I'm going to put in a bit of a... I've got company, so I can't say too much longer on it. Probably turned up with some Christmas presents. Just little bits of interest. Just some, just little, just little bits of interest. Uh, I will get get a few complaints about this because there won't be enough in it for somebody. But it's funny if there's some. Little figures there. <coughs> um, well, so it's looking now like this. The tide's got going out or gone out, and there's not a lot of, of water left other than the surface. So maybe uh, we'll exploit that. But I don't know whether I. Actually, I quite, I quite like it without a reflection. So a bit of an un, unfinished look. Um, well, let's put some 
put some bluey looking grey boats over here. Maybe a little mast or two. Let's put a mast up here. Got a bit of a smudge there. This oh, one might be good just put a boat in here then. Right, a couple of birds I think. I'll go and see who my guests are. Right, I'm going to I'm going to let that go. I quite like that. I'm, 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 it's uncluttered, the unfinished. But Give it a signature. Put it in a mount and we'll, we'll have, a, have a little look at it. There we go. Right. Uh, let's have that nice light coloured mount. Well, there we are, so a very simple, understated, spacious, uncluttered painting. Thanks for watching, I hope uh, there's enough in it for you to add a like or two. See you soon, bye bye.